He wasn't ready. <laughs> he wasn't ready. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm fishing with John with Faith in Fishing. And we're gonna go out. What are we fishing for today, John? What's going on everybody? Yeah, we're fishing for some sheep's head today. That's our target species. Um, right now what we're doing, we're just shucking oysters. Getting ready to hit that in incoming tide. It's about to switch here in a little bit. But um, yeah, just got a whole thing of oysters down here. Some uh, live green mussels. And uh, Rusty here, he's got some shrimp, so we're gonna hit some snapper with that probably, but yeah, look forward to an epic day. Yeah, the conditions are perfect. Of course, you never know how fishing goes, but <laughs> the conditions are perfect, so we should get on them today. It's a beautiful day outside, so stay tuned. Subscribe to both channels, guys. Yes, oh, one more thing I wanted to add, guys. Uh, if you guys can see this black piece around my kayak, it's actually a hose that's wrapped around my kayak to protect it when we were bouncing up against bridges and dock pilings and things like that. And I actually learned it from his channel. It's on his kayak as well. And so go check out his channel and subscribe and I'm gonna link the video of him explaining how to protect your kayak for bridge pilings and docks and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm gonna be fishing with two different rigs here. I've got a 3 ounce jig head on a loop knot and I don't know if this is medium or medium heavy this is an old G Loomis rod but I broke the tip off so it's way shorter of course I did that by accident but uh yeah and then it's on my pin fierce 3 2500 and then I've got a knocker rig with a size 1 mosquito hook got a little bead and that just protects the weight from bouncing up against the knot this is on a Pen Pursuit 3 2500. It's basically the same as the Fierce. It's just not an aluminum body. And this is on the six gill Aquilos medium power rod. There it is. Good yeah. I gotta get away from this. Ugh. Yeah. Whoop. Nice. I forgot my tape measure, but my paddle has a measure. Okay, good, I'm recording. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm recording. Woo! <laughs> Settle down. Alright guys. My sheep's head there. And... He is almost 14 inches. So that's a keeper. Those things are strong fighters for their size. Oh, <laughs> 
John's whooping up on me with, he's using oysters, I'm using shrimp, and I've got two keeper, she said he's got like four or five, and uh, he's got like this little oyster chucker knife, I gotta get one of those and try it out. He was showing me how to do it, and it's free bait, and he's catching a lot of fish right now. Settle down. Oh wow. It's a spade fish or whatever? Uh, yeah. Is that what it is? Spade fish? Yep, yeah, it's a spade fish. Wow, that's my first one. That's a that's a fun the first year or so. Not the first. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I don't know. If these got something sharp on them or anything. Dang, he said they're good? Yeah. I don't know, he's not that big though. Yeah, I don't know if there's a limit on them or if there's a regulation. Yeah, I'd have to look it up. I'm going to let him go. Well, there's a spade fish, guys. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting catch. <laughs> he's cool looking. All right. Snook wasn't whoo, wasn't expecting that. It was just a shrimp head, so I haven't caught a snook on just a shrimp head yet, so that's good. Cool. Oh. I thought it was fighting weird. I was like, what the heck? There we go. <laughs> he wasn't ready. <laughs> he wasn't ready. Man, as soon as he gets next to the boat, he takes off. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Maybe they just don't like me fishing the shrimp. <laughs> man, none of these are small, you know? No, man, they're all good size. Oh, 
Well guys, that's a wrap. I caught uh, three three keeper sheep's head. John caught like 57 of them. <laughs> but uh, it was a beautiful day out there. We went out there, we caught some really good fish, and we both got to bring some home to eat. So it's yeah, pretty it's, good. It's a really good day. We got to hide away from the sun, um, as you can tell in the video when you watch it. Yeah. I can tell you where that was though. All right. <laughs> it's a secret. It's a secret. Thanks for sharing with me your secret. Yeah, no worries, man. So subscribe to this guy if you, you see him. Definitely good content, good editing. He's new, but he's killing it. So <laughs> subscribe. Sure. Definitely go check out John's channel, Faith and Fishing. Check him out, subscribe, and we will see you next week. All right, guys, what I like to do is feel up near the head because there's actually some head meat that kind of goes up towards the head. It's not, it's not just like a flat fillet from the pectoral fin. And so you can kind of pick off those scales and then work in there. And then I'll go in at an angle beside the pector behind the pectoral fin. And if you come in at an angle, it'll slide between those really thick fish scales. And by their spine, there's actually like a little slit. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's like a little pocket, kind of a slit area next to their spine, which allows you to go ahead and guide the tip of your knife next to their spine and slide in there. And you can work all the way down that. And then when I get towards the tail, I usually go ahead and stick it all the way through and then just slide down the back. And uh, this is this is how I've been doing it, guys. There's plenty of other ways to do it, I'm sure. But um, this is what works for me. And then I kind of use the tip of my knife and just keep working against the backbone and sliding up like that. This is kind of about how I do any fish, really. And then try to get some of the belly meat down there. And when I get through that part, I just kind of power through it. So I'm just kind of muscling through that side just to go ahead and cut the whole kind of flank off. Because then you can just trim it up later how you want it. And it's a little faster. Then I'll take the tail, I'll put my fingertips on the tail to kind of hold it in place. And then work underneath the fillet right next to the skin. And I just try not to cut through the skin, I'm just trying to slide the meat right off. You can also grab the skin and kind of pull that back and forth against the knife, or you can work the knife back and forth like I'm doing. And so since I kind of forced, you know, cut through that whole side, I'm going to go ahead and cut off those ribs that came with it. And then here, I'm feeling for pin bones. I'm going to cut out those pin bones and the bloodline. And so that leaves you with a nice boneless fillet that you can have. And then that's kind of like the belly meat section. And I go ahead and cut off the pin bones and the bloodline there as well. And so I usually have a chunk of like the belly side and then that big back top fillet area. If you're near running water, you don't have to do this, but if I like to do it, if I'm near running water, I go ahead and rinse off the meat. That way it's a little cleaner while I'm waiting to go back to the house. It's not like sitting in bacteria or any, anything funky or anything like that. And then I go ahead and put it in a bag. And then once I get all my fillets in there, I'll go ahead and put it back on the ice. And so, you can cook this a ton of different ways. This night my wife was craving some fried fish. And it's hard to beat fried fish, especially with sheep's head. Sheep's head is nice because it's not fishy at all. It's like a white, firm, flaky meat. And you can put it with any flavor. So it's going to take on kind of any flavor that you give it. This is the Everglades fish and chicken fry batter. And so I like to... You can do any 
spreading that you like, but I like to put that in a bag while I'm letting the oil hook uh, heat up. And then the sheep's head fillets, they've been dried off a little bit with, I dabbed them with paper towels to get some of the moisture off. And that helps the breading and the egg wash to stick to it better. And the egg wash is one egg with two tablespoons of water. You can also do milk, but the water or the milk thins out the egg a little bit. And I find that the batter sticks to it better because if you just do egg, sometimes the batter kind of falls off because it's so kind of glumpy with the thick egg. But like this, and then shaking it up in the bag, all that breading like sticks to it really evenly. I can already tell you this was delicious by the way. <laughs> And then fry it to your liking. This is like a golden brown. It's probably like four or five minutes. I like to put it on a, like with any fried fish, I like to put it on a paper towel or some napkins and just kind of help soak up that excess grease. And then it'll also help the crust be a little bit crispier when it cools off. our finished product guys hey guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you did go ahead and hit the like button if you're not subscribed definitely think about subscribing I come out with the video every week there we go it was delicious <laughs> thanks again guys I will see you next week